What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. this is my second channel, and this is your home for my Twitch highlights and my podcast. So if you like this, and you wanna see more of that, and you wanna join the live streams, there's a link to that in the description of this video. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. Metalcore tier list. So we'll start with Amir. There are a couple different versions of Amir. Are we talking about old school Amir before it basically became a Tony Danza tap dance extravaganza with Frankie on vocals, or are we talking about new Amir? I think they're all great. I love every Amir, every era of Amir equally for different reasons. First album, The Respect Issue, is a classic. Well, no, that's not their first album. That is their first big album. First one I heard. That's the first time that I feel like Amir really found their groove, which is... Uh, singing about dicks. What is it? R2D2 that has uh, has the line. You go with my dick taste right. And I mean, if there's a better line in metalcore than that, <laughs> uh, I I don't know. The uh, second song that they had about dicks was on uh, Speaker of the Dead from 2010 or 11 or whatever that is. Uh, with their second song about dicks. <laughs> So that's early Amir. And then they, they basically lost all their members. Frankie, the founder of the band, came back with a new band uh, and got way more technical, way more scronky, um, and kind of way more new metal. Different band, but equally great. My favorite Amir song, I think, is Shinjuku Master Lord. I am going to say that Amir is S tier. You knew that I was going to say that. There's a couple factors on this tier list. Factor number one is how popular is the band, because we gotta we got to consider that. Factor number two is how influential they are. Factor number three is how much I like them. So I would say Amir, fairly popular. Amir sort of influential, but, but maybe not really. I don't really know. Uh, but how much I like them, I love Amir. So S tier. S tier it is for Amir. Give me another band here. Uh, Shadows Fall. Okay. I remember the first time I heard Shadows Fall was, I think, in 2000. I had a friend of mine who uh, I was kind of in a shitty band with. He was way better at guitar than I was. I, I used to think that I was pretty good at guitar. Um, I was actually kidding myself. This is my friend Lee. He was really into Shadows Fall. And uh, hang on one second here. Here we go. Okay, there we go. We fixed it. That was my introduction to Shadows Fall. It was my friend who was way better at guitar than I was. And uh, at first, I didn't really like it because I'm not into melodic death metal. Didn't really care for the singing and stuff like that. Uh, I was into Overcast, Brian's old band before that. Um, very overlooked band. But over time, I grew to appreciate Shadows Fall. Um, I would not say that they're an S-tier band. I don't even know if I would say they're A-tier necessarily, but they're a very good band. Not super influential they were fairly popular, but, you know, never really rose out of the, kind of the middle of the pack. I feel bad saying this because they are lovely guys uh, and I like them as humans. But I think uh, I'm going to go with B tier because, yeah, B, B tier. They, they're better than a C tier band. Ask Alexandria. Okay. I first heard this band in 2009. Back when they were blowing up on MySpace, I heard all these stories about how they were like, getting this, you know, crazy bidding war from all these different labels and they're selling out 1200 cap venues and stuff like that just based off of MySpace hype. Uh, and I thought it was all bullshit. I was obviously older than their target demographic at the time. I didn't believe it. I thought this was just like them manufacturing hype for themselves or something like that. But then I saw they got signed to Sumerian. Uh, I saw the numbers they were doing on MySpace and... You know, they were the real deal. I also interviewed them around that time. I think I was the first person to write a cover story about them. I interviewed them for Substream Magazine in late 2009, I think, maybe 2010. They're the real deal. Probably the biggest band of that, like, era of MySpace Metalcore, I think. Commercial popularity, I think they, they score very high on that. Influence, I feel like it was a gateway band for people that got a lot of people into Metalcore, but I don't know how many people you know, started a band and they're like, oh, we want to sound like Ask Alexandria. Well, there were plenty of bands who wanted to sound like Ask Alexandria, so I guess that's true. But um, as far as bands that actually went anywhere and kind of have a legacy, I don't know that, you know, that many people um, would cite Ask Alexandria as an influence as compared to even a less popular band like, say, 
um, Darkest Hour, way less popular, but but maybe be, maybe more influential than Ask Alexandria. I do not think their music is fantastic. I think Danny is a really fucking good vocalist. Uh, I think Ben is a really smart guy. I have a lot of respect for the band and what they've done, but I I, I don't love their music. Uh, however, based on just commercial success and you know how much how much of an impact they had on the scene, I think you got to put them in the A tier. Someone mentioned Spirit Box. I want I want to have some newer bands in here too. Relatively new band. I think they've been around for like five years or something like that. They're too new to really say what their trajectory is going to be. They've never done like a proper tour. They were supposed to be on tour with Limp Biscuit right now, but that got canceled. I feel really bad for Spirit Box because they're cool people. I interviewed Courtney on my podcast. She's a cool person. I really like what they have to say. They're uh, very good. Like they're, they're a cool band. Yeah. It just really sucks that this was like just the perfect tour for them to go out with Limp Biscuit. This is like the perfect opportunity for them to have kind of a coming out party and get introduced to like that big audience sort of right on the like peak of a bunch of hype that they had. So it's a real bummer that they had to, well, they didn't cancel it, that that tour got canceled. I feel like if they stick around and keep doing what they're doing, they're going to end up being one of the defining bands of this generation. But it's it's too soon to say. I like their music quite a bit. You know, sometimes it gets a little bit too butt rock for my tastes, but I get where they're headed with it. So based on now, I'm going to put them in B tier, but that's only because it's just too... It's too early to say what happens from here, but I would say, you know, a B for a band of their age is nothing to be ashamed of. What what do you guys think? Strapping in for some hot takes with Amir in the S tier. If you came to my Twitch, you should have known that Amir, you were going to see Amir in the S tier. Uh, Parkway Drive, there's another good one. Parkway Drive is an interesting band to me because I remember hearing them many years ago and I was very confused because they have this just this insane fan base that absolutely loves them and I didn't really understand why because you know musically they're they're certainly good but they're not anything amazing I wouldn't say their new stuff is a little too butt rock for me I understand why they've gone butt rock because you know they play a lot of those big European festivals right now and uh you, you got to play you got to play festival core if you're going to play festivals, right? You got to play music that Germans like to drink to because those are the people that are paying your rent if you're playing those big festivals and they're headlining them. So, you know, you got to have something that can uh, have pyro and all that shit if you want to be one of those big festival bands. So I understand why they've made that transition, although I do not like their newer music myself. I get it. What I didn't understand at the beginning was why people love the band so much because musically they're certainly good, but to me, not anything like super special compared to the 9 million other MySpace, you know, metalcore bands at the time. People just fucking loved them. And what I realized is that they they liked the band as much so for who they are as people as as their music. And they were really smart because they did a couple things early on. Number 1, they toured absolutely everywhere. They played all these random small towns in the middle of nowhere, all over Europe and America and stuff. And then they also put out those dvds like the first one which i think is from 2008 or something like that it was just them on tour kind of hanging out and stuff there are plenty of other bands that had dvds as well but i would say they were one of the first bands from that myspace metalcore scene to do something like that and they just seem like such cool guys bros in a van from a small town small surfer town in australia going around having fun like just being chill bros in a metalcore band really it was content marketing before we had a word for it. It was not so different than what people would do, you know, on Instagram and stuff like that. Only we had MySpace then, but people weren't documenting bands like that back then. Uh, Parkway did it, Seosin did it. And I think that was a big part of what made people like that band. Like someone said, just, you know, it's just good vibes. They just seem like cool guys. And that made me like their music a lot more. A lot of bands think that you become a fan of the band for their music and then you like them as people. But I think oftentimes it's the other way around. You get to know them as people and that makes you more positively inclined towards their music. As far as where they go on this list, their old stuff, I would say is pretty good musically. New stuff, not so much. Commercial success, they are doing very, very well. They crush it on those festivals. Not so much in America, but very, very successful in Europe and I assume in Australia. And influence, they didn't do anything different musically from, you know, any of the other sort of at the gates core bands. So I don't know that they're musically that influential, but they probably did get a lot of people into metalcore. So I will go 
with A tier for Parkway Drive. Crystal Lake. Okay. This is a band that comes up a lot. A lot of people don't like my take on this band, but let's talk about Crystal Lake. This is Crystal Lake, Japanese metalcore band. I'm going to skip the intro because intros are boring. Nobody should, nobody should ever have intros in songs. Sounds like a lot of other stuff. Exactly. Uh-oh, here comes the boring part. It's so funny to me when I have talked about this band before and people get so mad that I send, said they sound like architects. They fucking sound like architects. <laughs> like, how could you possibly say that they're generic architects core? Well, because they are. And I think they do it very well. Very, very well. Like, they are great players. Like, he's a really good vocalist. But there's nothing here I haven't heard, like, 50 times before. Very solid band, but I would say they sound like a lot of other stuff. That said, people do love them. You know, not, not super successful. Um, not super original. Influential? I mean, I, I don't know that I could say they were any more influential than architects because they're basically just Japanese architects. I would put them on C tier. I know, I know a lot of people are going to be upset about that. Let me know in the chat what you guys think about me putting Crystal Lake in C tier. Okay, someone keeps bringing up Chimera. I lived in Cleveland. Chimera is from Cleveland. They were part of the new wave of American heavy metal thing in the um, mid-2000s, along with like Kill Switch, God Forbid. Fuck, who else was part of that? I don't know. All That Remains might be part of that too. They got a lot of hype from that, and they came out uh, in 1998, and they were a new metal band. Let's let's play one of Chimera's new metal songs, because I actually think their new metal songs are awesome. Look at this. Look at everything. Everything about this video is just pure... Midwest new metal. The pants, like practicing in some fucking storage spot with, you know, their Adidas shell toes. Anyway, so that's Chimera, and then they uh, they they blew up. Like I, we weren't really expecting them to blow up. Uh, at least I wasn't expecting them to blow up as much as they did. They signed a Roadrunner. They went out with all those big bands. They did it. Commercial success. I would say they did reasonably well um never as big as you know kill switch obviously but they did pretty well influence i don't really hear people bring chimera up that often which is too bad because they were fucking good let's listen to this other chimera song i love this part really solid players too uh anyhow I would put them, I think, B tier for Chimera because they never really blew up like Kill Switch or any of those other bands, but they were they were solid. Who is next? Uh, bless Bless the Fall. Okay, Bo Boken was mean to me a while ago, and I was I was upset because he seems like a decent guy. I never I, I've never interacted with him, but I, I guess mm. I said something he didn't like. He made a mean story post about me. But where should we put Bless the Fall? Okay, it's sort of weird because they somehow or another went to what, like number 12 or something like that on Billboard in 2014. Uh, maybe it was even higher than that, I don't remember. They did really well, which I did not expect because, you know, I've always thought of them as kind of, you know, uh, just okay. Their old stuff is terrible, like with <laughs> Craig Mabbitt is awful, um, but they were kids. It's fine. Uh, they had the look and they had like the vibe and stuff, but they were not not a good band. Uh, in the beginning, but they got a lot better. But to me, they were just musically always just sort of fairly, you know, middle of the road, average, kind of at the gates core, nothing really exceptional about them, but nothing bad about them. I don't think they're particularly influential. Kids listen to them. But again, if you ask people who their influences are, I don't think there's going to be too many people that are going to say bless the fall. So I will go with C tier. What do we, what do we think about that? Is that fair for bless the fall? And, uh, you know, Bo, if you happen to be watching, no hard feelings, buddy. I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry that whatever I said upset you. You seem like a good guy to me. I think it was probably just a misunderstanding. So as far as I'm concerned, we're still friends. So no hard feelings, Bo. Trivium. Okay. Trivium is interesting. I have to say, I think uh, Matt is a solid dude. I like Matt a lot. Very smart guy too. Very hard worker. He does not waste his time. 
he doesn't half-ass anything. He also comes from a uh, military family. His dad was in the Marines. My dad was in the Navy. Lots of times people that come from military families have that kind of discipline and just sort of, you know, they have a little bit of that hard-nosed character that, you know, takes you far in life. Matt has that, and I really respect that. I also respect that, you know, they were written off as like a gay scene band when they came out. And of course, I, I'm not, I don't use that word, but you know, that's, that's what, that's what people called them. For whatever reason, he in particular kind of had this reputation of being like a diva. Uh, I, I don't know why. Whenever I've talked to him, he's the opposite of that. So I don't know what it was. Maybe it's just that they got successful early and people didn't like that. But now they've been retconned as a metal band, which is interesting because, you know, in the beginning, if you remember, Trivium was a gay scene band. <laughs> but that's the way it works. If you're a gay scene band and you stick around long enough and keep playing metal, eventually you'll become accepted as a metal band. And that's what they did. Uh, musically, I would say they're very solid. Um, commercially, I don't remember how well they've charted, but I would say that they're they're a notch above the rest of these bands commercially. I would say they're fairly influential too. They're not Slayer, but I would say they're fairly influential. So I, I would say A tier makes sense for Trivium. 18 Visions. How many people are into 18 Visions? I love 18 Visions. One of my favorite bands for sure. Even the, the rock stuff that everyone hates, I love it. Listen to how heavy this shit is. It's from 99, and the song is even from before 99, but this is this recording is from 99. Listen to how fucking heavy this is. This is heavy as fuck for 99. Yeah, I love this band. One of my favorite bands of all time. And then they went butt rock. But again, they 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 were the first band to go butt rock. <laughs> they literally invented scene hair. Hav and James from 18 Visions literally invented scene hair. This is one of my favorite 18 Visions butt rock songs. So good. I could talk about 18 Visions all day, but we got more bands to get to. As much as I love them, you know, I think C tier is the place to be. Never really got super influential or super popular. I don't think they were particularly influential. I love them, but I think C tier is, is the place to put them. As they lay dying. Okay. I have never been a fan of As they lay dying for many reasons. Main reason being Tim trying to murder his wife. Not cool. <laughs> Not cool. It bums me out how many people are kind of, um, kind of okay with this. Musically, I thought that they, I mean, I had already heard At The Gates, so I, I was not wowed by them. I think Nick is an awesome guy, but he's not in the band anymore. They were pretty successful. As much as I dislike As LA Dying, I would have to put them as an A tier band. All That Remains, maybe the first butt core band, right? The first like metalcore band to go full like red state butt rock, maybe. <laughs> I've talked to Phil maybe a couple times, but uh, he seems like a cool guy. I, I really respect that he's always kind of been in his own lane politically. Uh, he gets a lot of hate for that. A lot of people give him a hard time for it. But I think it's cool that he's always kind of been unapologetically himself. Ollie was a great guitarist. They're kind of in the same tier as Shadows Fall to me. They did well, never huge, not super influential, but solid band. So I would go with B tier. A Day to Remember, that's another one that came up. Now, I don't know if I would call A Day to Remember... A day to remember. I said I en I enunciated it so clearly. A day to remember. I don't know if I would call a day to remember metalcore metalcore ish for sure. Metalcore adjacent, but they are S tier in my book. There is no other place for a day to remember other than S tier. One of my favorite bands of all time. Super successful commercially. They've got a platinum single, I think, right? Like All I Want, I think went platinum. It definitely went gold. Several Billboard top 10 albums. They kill it on tour. Very, very, very influential. Uh, I love them. So I feel pretty confident in an S tier ranking for a day to remember. But what do you guys think? C tier, fuck that shit. You're out to lunch if you would call a data remember C tier. But yes, not totally metalcore. You know, we really haven't gotten to any like D tier bands. Who should we put in D tier? I mean, there's just so many D tier bands, right? Like Dr. Acula, We Butter the Bread with Butter, Band in All Ships. Yeah, there's a D tier. We got we to gotta have something in the D tier just to have something in the D tier. The ultimate D tier band, Dr. Acula, which a surprising number of people mentioned this band to me like, Bro, you're gonna, ever going to do a video about Dr. Acula? Like, no. Fuck no, I'm never going to do a video about Dr. Acula. Memphis May Fire. That's an interesting one. Okay, so here's the thing. Memphis May Fire. 
is is actually kind of fire. They kind of suck in so many different ways, but they're also kind of they're kind of awesome. The song with uh with Jacoby from Papa Roach is fire. Their new song is also fire. I love that they have two new videos that use the same set for the video. <laughs> A little lazy but i get it budgets are no bands should have intros why do bands have intros nobody wants this nobody wants an intro just play the song i mean yes it is generic but it's pretty good memphis may fire is totally generic but sometimes that's what you want sometimes you just want some generic rise core and nobody plays it anymore. And it's not butt rock. I would give them a solid a solid C tier, but a C tier is not a bad thing. It doesn't mean your band is bad. It just means you're a C tier band. Converge. I do not like Converge's music. It's too noisy for me. It is what they intended to do, which is to make noisy, difficult music. And they did that. And it was cool. I liked them, um, you know, in like 97, 98 or something when they just sort of were starting to get decent. Uh, I thought it was kind of cool, but I do not like their music. Too noisy, too all over the place for me. However, well, first of all, they're great guys. Kurt is awesome. He's he, uh, I've talked to Nate a couple times, I guess. Awesome guys. I super respect what they have accomplished. Very, very, very influential. Not super commercially successful, of course, but that's by design. They never intended to be very commercially successful. I would say that even though I personally do not care for their music, uh, I respect it very much. And I think you got to put them in the S tier. North Lane. Any of those Architects core bands are C tier to me. Crystal Lake, North Lane, Thornhill, Era, Polaris. Architects core is all C tier to me. Nothing wrong with it, but it's just it's just C tier. Motionless in White. They're a very interesting band because when they came out, they were okay. Not, not great, but not bad. Like Creatures is decent. They're one of the few bands that got way, way better over time. They got kind of kind of new metally, kind of butt rocky, but but great because they're smart. Chris is a smart guy. You can say what you want about them, but he's no dummy. This is my favorite motionless and white song, even though it's kind of butt rock. I love this song. Anyway, you get the idea. I would put them, you know, they've sold a lot of fucking records. I would put them in B tier, I would say. You know, they're they're sort of the entry point for those like gothic, you know, hot topic kind of kids now. But yeah, we'll we'll put them in B tier. I see the ghost inside. That's that's a good let's talk about the ghost inside. They are one of my favorite bands. Um, which I didn't I didn't expect them to be one of my favorite bands. I first heard them back on one of those like breakdown videos, like one of those, you know, top ten top ten breakdowns that will cure your insomnia videos or whatever. I don't remember what song it was, but I heard the ghost inside on there and I was into it. I got their album, the lion war, and I was a huge fan of it. And then I just kept listening to everything they did. And I just, I don't know. I just loved it. You'd think that there would be more bands that sound like them, but there aren't. I call them hardcore core. Cause it's like, it's like if a metalcore band played hardcore songs, it's not really hardcore, but it's not really exactly metalcore either. It's hardcore core. Uh, and I really wish that there were more bands like the Ghost Inside because they're fucking awesome. But unfortunately, there's really nobody else that sounds like them. Um, and so I would put them S tier. Great guys, too. I love this band. Can't say enough good things about Ghost Inside. They're S tier. Wage War. How about that? Here's the thing with Wage War. I have made fun of them a lot and they probably hate me. I think they're a good band and I hope that they don't hate me. So I think they're a good band. I do think that they went a little bit too far in the butt rock kind of direction. And I kind of didn't like it. I get why. I'm sure that that was successful for them. And, you know, they're, they're smart guys. But I didn't care for it too much. However, their new song is fucking awesome. A little slipknotty, but this is fucking good. I'm going to put Wage War in B tier just because it's it's too, you know, actually, meh. Yeah, we'll put them in the B tier. It's too early to say where they're going to go. I think they have a bright future. Wage War, solid band. They go in the B tier. Avenge Sevenfold. You guys know where I'm going to put them, I'm sure. The more I listen to them, the more they hold up. This band is fucking great, especially like their old stuff, you know, like City of Evil. 
uh, and self-titled. I mean, especially considering how young they were, how catchy those songs were, how how big they got. The new shit um, is awesome too. It's maybe not quite as catchy, but it's if you're into progressive shit. I mean, the stage is a pretty cool. Like they have a 13 minute song with fucking Neil deGrasse Tyson. Brooks Wackerman is in the band. Like, I mean, this this is a prog nerd's dream come true. I'm going to put Avenged Sevenfold on the S tier. My cat wants to say hi. Can you guys see her? She wants to say hi. Let's do Architects. So where do we put Architects? Based on the criteria, commercial success, they've really surprised me. You know, I remember when they came out and they were just kind of, you know, yet another sort of good but unremarkable metalcore band. But they just kind of kept going and going and going. And, you know, they've kind of quietly become one of the most successful bands in metalcore. I don't personally care for their new stuff. Uh, their old stuff, you know, the doomsday type stuff, it was okay. It's neither here nor there to me. Like their music isn't like super brutal, but it's also not that melodic either. It's kind of just like, you know, in the middle. For me personally, it's just kind of neither here nor there, but I get it. I think they do it better than anybody. Somebody pointed out that maybe Monuments might have been the band that sort of invented the doomsday riff and they might be right but architects is certainly the band that popularized it very 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 influential band because every goddamn band in metalcore now <laughs> wants to be architects i think they're going to go down as being like maybe the most influential band of this this era of metalcore very successful as well i certainly respect them they seem like really cool guys um i i, I think very highly of the band regardless of whether i personally listen to them I would put them on the A tier. You know, to me, they're like they're like Parkway. They might go on the S tier though uh, in a couple more years, but I would put them on the A tier for now. All right. Well, we could keep going forever, but I feel like this is enough for the uh, the metalcore tier list. We can always do another version of this. I'll do tier list for other genres if you guys think this is fun. I thought it was fun. No kill switch. No, because we've been doing this for a long time. Kill switch would be S tier, but um i don't know i'm i'm bored with this let's move on yeah bring the horizon would be s tier as well good content past the time i i thought it was pretty fun we're gonna remember this this night forever tonight is the night that we made the best metalcore tier list of all time i'm sorry to my wife she made a metalcore tier list on her youtube channel which is very good but this was the best metalcore tier list anybody has ever made ever and we're gonna remember this night forever for that reason